All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are locked on Falcons. I'm your host, Aaron Freeman, and today is a mailbag episode where I'll be answering a listener question over whether or not the Falcons should be looking to upgrade their offensive line over other positions in the upcoming draft. We'll be talking about the newest Falcons free agent signing and safety, Dean Morrow, as well as being joined later by Locked On Titans host Tyler Rowland to talk a little bit more about Marcus Mariota's past in Tennessee as well as his future in Atlanta. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, guys, you know me. I'm Aaron Freeman. Been covering the Falcons for many years, formerly at Falcfans.com. RIP, still going strong on Twitter, at Falcfans. And, of course, the host of this illustrious Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. More on that a little bit later. And I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Falcons your first listen each and every day. Of course, Locked On Falcons like Locked On Sports Atlanta, is free and available on a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Google, Spotify, as well as on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you'll get the video version of the podcast the night before you get the audio version of the podcast. So guys, today's episode is a mailbag. We got some mailbag questions from before free agency that we got to get to uh, to sort of clear things out as we roll into the draft month in the month of April. And later in the episode, we'll be joined by Locked On Titans host Tyler Rowland to come on and weigh his thoughts on uh, Marcus Melio's past as well as a potential future here in Atlanta. And we got a couple of listener questions uh, dealing with uh, one later in the episode on, you know, the exodus of wide receivers. And and if, if that's related to Matt Ryan, later in the episode, we'll be talking about the new Falcons free agent pickup. Uh, in safety, Dean Marlowe, uh, and sort of what he's bringing to the table. But first, we got a listener question talking about the trenches, and we'll get into that question from Connor, Connor M. right now. He asks, Aaron, love your show. While your rants used to upset me when I first started listening, I've come to realize that you are just a realist and that you are correct with your takes more often than not. So that's Connor's question, and we'll just move. No, I'm kidding. That's not Connor's question, but I, I certainly enjoy the accolades let's uh move on to the actual meat of connor's question he says i'll make this quick my question is this with the skill positions being decimated this all season are we thinking that rebuilding the offense are we thinking about rebuilding the offense completely wrong would a faster path to offensive success be to focus on bringing in the right free agents or rookies to build a dominant offensive line and then snipe the proper wide receivers when the time comes I feel like right now everyone is panicking about the wide receiver room since Ridley news, understandably. Perhaps we can see a greater success by first building a formidable running attack. With that in mind, are we thinking about the draft run with the depth at defensive line and wide receiver? Why not go in the first round offensive line, second and third rounds defensive line or wide receiver, and then fourth round the rest of the draft? Roast away, Connor M. So Connor submitted his question, you know, before free agency, I think back on March 10th. So we're clearing out the mailbag. We got a couple of weeks uh, of stuff to get through. But, you know, Connor, I think you're you're not off. Right. Um, I generally believe that wide receiver is kind of the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to team building and roster building, um, that wide receivers aren't necessarily foundational pieces. They're kind of mercenaries that you bring in when you have the quarterback, you have the offensive line, you have the defense or whatever the case may be, that the foundation of your team is going to be built at those positions and those position groups more so than the wide receiver group. Um, but, you know, I think this gets to the sort of the core of my criticism and my frustration with the Falcons offseason moves so far this offseason. And to be clear, my criticism of Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith isn't because I think they're bad guys. It's because I don't know if they've really done enough to merit the amount of praise, in my opinion, that they have gotten. Anybody who's a longtime listener to this podcast knows a pet peeve of mine when people, I think people are overrating things. I was, you know, sitting here for years and years saying, you guys overrate Vic Beasley. Um, you know, the last several years have been like, you guys overrate Deion Jones. And now I feel like right now we're kind of overrating Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith. Uh, we're crowning them before they've really achieved something. And, you know, I laid my cards out on the table 
earlier this offseason, about a month ago, when we did those consecutive free agent Fridays on the podcast, where I looked at the offensive and defensive free agents, I would love to see the team added. And over the course of those two episodes, I added three starting caliber offensive linemen and five potential starting caliber defensive linemen to really upgrade in the trenches where I feel like this has been a problem area for the Falcons over the last decade. That when you go back and look at the shortcomings of the Falcons over the last decade, a lot of it is tied to the trenches. It's not because they don't have great skill position players or whatever the case may be, but teams that have been successfully able to consistently beat the Falcons and keep this team ceiling from reaching the heights that we've all thought that they were capable of reaching have been predominantly because they've been able to control the game in the trenches. You go back a decade ago when Carolina was at the top of this division uh, and they were able to do that. You go to the NFC Championship game against the 49ers a decade ago. You go five years ago when we struggled against teams like Minnesota and Philadelphia. They consistently consistently controlled the line of scrimmage. You look at recent years with Tampa Bay and New Orleans dominating the division and how they've been able to dominate us in the trenches. This has been the Achilles heel for the Falcons for the last decade. And I really hope that this current regime can change that. And part of my frustration is I thought they had an opportunity this offseason to sort of move the ball forward in that regard with the three free agent pickups on the offensive line, James Daniels, Ben Jones, and, and Cornelius Lucas was the guys that I suggested, and the five guys on defense, Josh Tupo as that nose tackle, F.A. Obata as that interior pass rusher, and three edge rushers, and Whitney Merciless, Jacob Martin, and of course, Lorenzo Carter, who they did wind up adding. And it's not because uh, like it's not like I'm butt hurt because they didn't sign the eight guys that I wanted them to sign. I'm butt hurt because they didn't sign any of the guys, right? You know, they signed Lorenzo Carter, and that's it, right? You know, Elijah Wilkinson they added to the offensive line, but he's arguably a worse swing tackle than the swing tackle they had a year ago in Jason Spriggs. And you haven't seen enough moves on the defensive side of the ball. And I sit here and I go like, I understand that the Falcons were dealt a bad hand; they have limited resources or whatever the case may be. But it feels like you know right now. They're looking like they're going to run it back with the same starting five offensive linemen, right? And we're hoping that they're going to address the defensive line in the draft, which I think they will. But we're going to be relying heavily on, on rookies or whatever the case may be. And again, we talked about this with Will McFadden earlier on uh, the podcast yesterday, talking about how the Falcons in the past have been proactive in the month of April uh, under this current regime a year ago, and that they can be proactive again this year. So I'm, I'm sitting here as everybody continues to yell at me and, and, and tell me you got to be patient and you got to wait. I say I am being patient, but I'm not going to sit here and, and say, oh, they're doing a great job before they've actually done anything. You know what I'm saying? And that's that gets to the core of, of my issue. So I'll wait and see if they sign people in the next couple of weeks before the draft. I'll wait and see if they address these areas of their roster in the draft. But I I, I really do struggle right now, guys, to, to really look at this situation and say, man, they're doing an outstanding job and heap the amount of praise on them that I see so many people out there heaping on them. And that's why I, I you know, you hear me sort of be that contrarian, be that guy that pushes back against that notion, because I'm sitting here saying, as I said, you know, weeks ago, you know, what have they done that has really change this narrative and if we're sitting here saying okay well we, we're not gonna be able to solve this problem this year we'll solve it next year okay and i sit here and i go if that's the case are you really going to seriously draft a rookie you know particularly uh in in a world where we're, we're talking about drafting malik willis and we're going to throw him to the wolves uh, behind this offensive line right uh, this year and and let him basically get his butt kicked for an entire season where this offensive line same starting five we're now asking them to block guys like tj watt and miles garrett Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald, right? You know, Vita Vea, Cam Jordan, Jonathan Allen, et cetera. All these guys are still on the schedule, guys. And, you know, we're just going to let that rookie just basically get his butt kicked. And I sit here and I go, if that's the plan, if that's the plan, if we wind up using, you know, particularly a, a number one pick on a, on a quarterback, because again, as we've discussed previously on the podcast, when talking about Marcus Mariota, he's probably not going to last a full season, guys. So that rookie's going to play. He's going to get thrown to the wolves. And, you know, you guys sit here and, and many of you get upset every time we bring up Justin Fields in the podcast, but we just watched the Bears do this exact same thing with Justin Fields a year ago. And we sit here and we had the conversation with uh, Mark Schofield earlier this week about environment and, and quarterbacks being a byproduct of their environment. And we're going to throw a rookie quarterback into the, the, the Wolves' den, the Lions' den, with a behind a bad offensive line, just like the Bears did with Justin Fields, bad offensive line, no weapons, right? But at least Justin Fields had a running game in a, in a halfway decent defense in Chicago. The Falcons don't have either of those things. So I sit here and I go, what's the plan, guys? If that's the, you know, so I this is this is why I, I sit here and I'm, 
I, I am not as willing as everybody else is to sort of heap praise to me what I see as empty praise on these guys who are like, they're doing a great job. I'm like, that remains to be seen. Maybe in the future, they will do an excellent job. You know, we'll talk about D Marlowe and whatever. I like the signing. I like the fact that the Falcons are bringing in people to the roster. But again, D Marlowe's not addressing the Falcons' number one problem, which is in order to make this team work. And again, getting back to Connor's question, like I do think if you want to make this offensive scheme work, you have to have a strong offensive line in a running game. I want this rookie quarterback, whether it's Malik Willis or Desmond Ritter or Carson Strong or Bryce Young or CJ Stroud, or whoever it is, guys, when the Falcons find their franchise quarterback. I want him to go into an environment similar to what Matt Ryan went into with a mostly already built offensive line. They had to add Sam Baker, but other than that, they didn't have to add new pieces to that offensive line. He was able to turn around and hand the ball off to Michael Turner on first and second downs, and then basically on third and sixes and third and fives, throw the ball at Roddy White, Michael Jenkins, and Tony Gonzalez. I want to see this regime do the thing that they said for a year that they were planning on doing, which is we're going to build up the roster and then go get the quarterback. Let's go build up the roster, guys. And again, if we're waiting till next year to do that, okay. And so I'm hoping that in this draft, the Falcons can address those problems on the offensive line and the defensive line to solve the problem. This has been the core of my issue. I sat here and I said, please, if you want me to be inspired by this current regime, solve these problems. They haven't solved anything yet. And that's the core of my beef with them because I'm sitting here looking at all these people who are like, they're doing a great job. I think they're really, I'm really excited by what they're doing. I'm like, what have they done? You tell me. So leave a comment and let me know. <laughs> but uh, we will continue today's episode by getting into another listener question about the idea of whether or not all these departures at the wide receiver position is, you know, reflects on Matt Ryan um, and how that reflects on Matt Ryan, as well as we'll get into the Dean Marlowe Siley and what he brings to the table but before we get there, guys, I do want to uh, plug the latest development here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, and that is Locked On Sports Atlanta, which is a brand new channel on all the same podcast platforms that you can find Locked On Falcons. Uh, and it is, you know, sort of a comprehensive channel that's going to be covering all Atlanta sports. You're not losing Locked On Falcons or Locked On Hawks or Locked On Braves or Locked On Bulldogs. You're not losing any of the shows. They're not going anywhere but they're all part of the Locked On Sports Atlanta family. And we're also adding three new sort of comprehensive shows that are covering all the local sports here in the Atlanta area on the Locked On Sports Atlanta channel. You get A to Z with Mark Zeno. You're getting hard hitting with John Chuckery. And of course, ATL Day Ones with Jarvis Davis and Tanitra Baptiste. You guys know Zeno from his days on the radio from 680 The Fan. Chuckery, again, on 92.9 The Game. Jarvis and Tanitra are also from 92.90 game. And of course, you know, Jarvis been covering the Falcons. Tanitra's, you know, covers the Hawks quite a bit and whatnot. And so they're going to give you the lowdown on all Atlanta sports on their own devoted channel. You're going to get all three shows on the Locked On uh, Sports Atlanta uh, channel, either on YouTube or on Odyssey and Apple and all these various things. You will see all these guys on Locked On Falcons as well as some of the other local shows in the coming weeks. You know, certainly you're going to see a lot of Jarvis over the next couple of uh, uh, months as we get geared up for the season. Uh, we got some certain things, you know, that we're ready to do in the course of the season with Jarvis as well as these others. And you'll probably hear me, you know, making frequent guest appearances when the Falcons are up to some good or no good, uh, you know, on their various shows. So of course, check out Locked On Sports Atlanta, again, Locked On Falcons and all the other local shows are part of that new family of shows. So guys, we know that the final four is just around the corner. We will find out who the new national champs are in college basketball. And you can get in on that action by heading over to betonline.net the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. And you can get podcasts there as well as the latest odds, contests, and player props. You name it, BetOnline has it all. And whether you're into March Madness, of course, BetOnline still has you covered, particularly going into the month of April, where we know NF NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs, UFC 273, the Masters, so much more is happening in April. And of course, the 2022 NFL draft is there where BetOnline has the best props, number one overall pick first quarterback taken is that going to be Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett again you can go find it all at betonline.net so head on over to the website today betonline where the game starts so guys let's talk a little bit about the Dean Marlowe 
the free agent pickup the Falcons added on Thursday, uh, former Detroit Lion, former Buffalo Bill, former Carolina Panther. Uh, my good buddy Alan Sterk went to high school with him. So, uh, excuse me, sorry. Maybe we can have Alan come on the podcast and share his insight as opposed to Locked on Lions, uh, Matt Derry, to do that in the future. So um, he's coming off his most uh, season that he's played the most amount of football with the Lions, where he started basically the last eight or nine games of the season in the second half, mostly due to injuries forcing them to move their regular starting safety, Will Harris, to cornerback uh, in the second half of the season. Um, you know, I, I know one of the factors after spending a couple of years in Buffalo being more of a dime safety, and I read an article where, you know, one of the factors that attracted him to Detroit was the fact that they played more of that too high, uh, you know, safety looks that Aaron Glenn brought over from New Orleans uh, and installed there. So again, that's a testament to sort of the style of defense what we've talked about for the last several months about how Dean Pease wants to play, going out there, getting a guy like Casey Hayward, his own corner, getting a, a Dean Marlowe type who presumably wants to play a little bit more of that two high looks as he did in Detroit last year. And that's an indicator of what the Falcons want to do, play more of that zone cover two style defense. And the other thing I noticed was that his highest graded game a year ago uh, in 2021 was against the Falcons uh, when the Lions played them late in the season. And so one of my goals is to rewatch that game over the weekend. And then, you know, maybe next week uh, we can come back. And, and if I have some thoughts on it or, of course, you can probably I might tweet out some thoughts on that. So make sure you check out Locked on Falcons or, or Falc fans uh, for that. So he seems all indicators, again, without having done a deep dive in the film yet. Um, but you know, it seems a pretty versatile guy can play deep safety, can play in the box has, has some experience covering the slot. So can kind of be utilized potentially in a similar role that we utilize Eric Harris as sort of a Jack of all trades type of player, uh, certainly add some valuable depth to the team, but certainly I think a guy capable, um, that, uh, could potentially compete for and ultimately win a starting safety spot just because right now the options that the Falcons have with Eric Harris being brought back, uh, Richie Grant and Jalen Hawkins, none of those guys are proven starters at this point in time. We hope that Jalen Hawkins, we hope that Richie Grant can sort of emerge as that. And, you know, of course, some people are hoping that the Falcons can potentially add to that position in the draft, particularly maybe even with their number one overall pick in Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. So uh, we'll see how that all sort of unpacks. But certainly, you know, part of me thinks that, you know, in addition to potentially being a you know competition and essentially replacing Deron Harmon, uh, you know, in in the Falcons, if and maybe not purely as the, sort of that deep safety that Harmon was mostly utilized as, but you know, a guy that can be util moved around and whatnot. But one notable role that Deron Harmon did have a year ago was he was the personal protector on the Falcons punt team for most of the season, and guys like Marlowe as well as uh, Damon Williams. Uh, the Falcons running back that they added earlier this offseason do have experience uh, playing as that personal protector on the punt team. Eric Harris also has some experience from his days with the Raiders. So part of me wonders, are the Falcons, you know, essentially asking Dean Marlowe, if not necessarily playing Harmon's role on defense, maybe he'll fill Harmon's shoes on special teams as the team's personal protector. And we also know that, you know, he's got to have a punter to protect on those punt coverage teams. And, you know, we're still waiting on Thomas Morstead, but it, it seems likely right now that the Falcons may decide to draft a punter. And if they don't draft a punter, then maybe they'll resign someone like Thomas Morstead after the draft. So we'll see how that goes. But we have one more uh, listener question that I want to get to from RJ. He asked, and again, this came over the weekend when the whole Deshaun Watson saga was going on. He says, I got a non Deshaun Watson question for you with Gage now playing in Tampa Bay, Ridley and his mental health issues and Julio burning bridges on his way out of town. Could there be some truth to the rumors that whiteouts don't like playing for Matt Ryan? Um, I don't think so. I think all indications that we've heard um, seem to suggest that guys love Matt Ryan. You know, maybe there's something under the surface. I don't know about it, but I wouldn't read too much in to these guys, you know, leaving town and indicating that it's a Matt Ryan issue. I think it's a, more of an Atlanta Falcons issue and not the quarterback uh, situation because you, you take them sort of case by case. You look at Gage, right? You know, like he left for Tampa Bay. He wants to win, right? Uh, you get recruited by Tom Brady. Tom Brady gives you a phone call and says, hey, come play for me. Like who's going to say no to Tom Brady if you're a wide receiver in this league? So, um, you know, with Calvin Ridley, again, there's so much going on with Calvin Ridley. Like, who knows with Calvin Ridley? But I don't think there's any reason to assume it's Matt Ryan related based off of all the other issues that were going on with Calvin Ridley. And Julio, you know, I know a lot of that stems from, you know, reports and, and statements out there from various sources saying that Julio wants to play with a strong arm quarterback. And a lot of people interpreting that as a shot at Matt Ryan. 
I didn't necessarily interpret that. And again, part of that may be just I missed the context for when that was sort of out there and, and how that was utilized. But, you know, I think a lot of people interpreted it as the reason why Julio wanted out of Atlanta is because he wanted a stronger arm quarterback. And I interpreted it as the reason why Julio wanted out of Atlanta based off of his own words was that he wanted to win. Um, and I, my guess is, and again, don't know the full context, but I just sort of assumed that when he was asked, like, where do you want to go? He said somewhere with a strong arm quarterback, not necessarily I want out of Atlanta because they don't have a strong, you know what I'm saying? So I think people sort of made that connection that, oh, he, he's taking shots at Matt Ryan. And I didn't necessarily take that. But again, um, you know, maybe other people have a little bit more insight into the context of those statements. So. That's where we'll leave RJ's question and we'll move on uh, to wrap up the rest of today's episode by talking with Tyler Rowland of Locked on Titans about Marcus Mariota and why he failed in Tennessee and whether or not, you know, he's going to be a worthwhile reclamation project here in Atlanta and in, you know, beyond uh, in the future. Although, again, as we've discussed quite a bit over the last week, the expectations are the Falcons will find their franchise quarterback either this year or next year and move on from Marcus Mariota. But again, Tyler may have some, you know, unique insights into whether or not, you know, that may be, you know, the, the best choice. Maybe the Falcons can get more out of Marcus Mario. So tune into that. And before we get into that, I do want to give you guys an update. If you weren't following along when I put up that poll on Locked on Falc or on Falc fans uh, on Twitter, that Twitter poll basically asking what's the over under on game start. And I, I said it at six, you know, will Marcus Mariotto start over six games this year or start under six games this year for the Falcons? Um, and 80% of you, roughly almost 2000 people voted 80% of you said over six games. Uh, I personally thought under, so I'm part of me is wondering, oh, like because it's so obvious, uh, it's slanted in one direction. I probably set the over under probably a little too too low, too low. So maybe I should have set it at nine games, which would have mean that he would start the majority of the games this season. And I wonder, sort of, would we get a little bit more um, thoughts on that? So maybe we'll run we'll that poll at a later date. You know, uh, where you know, you know, we'll wait till after the draft. I think is is probably where we'll potentially run that in May or something like that. So uh, keep an eye on that, and we'll keep an eye on the rest of today's Locked on Falcons, just like you guys should keep an eye on for your second listen after you've made Locked on Falcons your first listen, which we always thank you for. Uh, you should keep an eye on the Locked on NFL podcast, where they're keeping you covered for all the big storylines going on around the NFL. Of course, you know, the big storyline over the last 24 hours is Bruce Arian stepping down as the Bucks head coach and Todd Bowles stepping into that. So of course you want to check out Locked on Bucks for the load down on that, as well as Locked on NFL on the same podcast platforms you can find Locked on Falcons. Uh, guys, you know, Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar, but it's even better than a candy bar because the Built Bars not only taste good, they're good for you because they're low in sugar, low in calories, low in carbs, but high in protein, high in fiber. Built Bars are all about their puff flavors in the month of March. We're almost gearing up for April, but as we sort of turn the clock from March to April, uh, you know, they have a site-wide 20% off sale. So go check out that site-wide sale for a limited time only before we get to April and whatnot. And, you know, if you want to check out one of their puff flavors, which is the first protein infused marshmallow that comes in a variety of flavors like churro puff and banana cream pie and coconut marshmallow and, and so much more. You also can get the tried and trues like salted caramel, you know, uh, uh, double chocolate, uh, coconut almond, peanut butter brownie. So, you know, 20 percent off sale. You know, great value there. And in addition to that, you know, the, the thing that Built Bar does is like you can use your promo code and still get an additional savings by using that promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off more. So you can, uh, you know, double up the savings by heading over to Built.com and use that promo code LOCK15. Again, that's LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. So, guys, you're locked on Falcons, but today we're joined by the locked on Titans host, Tyler Rowland. You know him as Tic Tac Titans. Tyler's been on this podcast a number of times to give us sort of the inside scoop over the last year on folks like Arthur Smith and Dean Pease, as well as other factors. And today we got Tyler coming on to talk a little bit about Marcus Mariota. I already touched upon sort of my thoughts on Mariota and his future here in Atlanta on last week's episode, but we'll sort of get... Tyler's insight, as he's certainly seen a lot more of Marcus Mariota over the last, you know, six, seven years now, uh, compared to me. And so, Tyler, I want to welcome you back to Locked on Falcons, but let's jump right into the conversation and sort of, in your eyes, in your words, sort of where and how and why did things go wrong for Marcus Mariota in Tennessee? 
Sure, yeah, and this is a, a divisive topic uh, within the Titans fan base, most certainly, as most people will probably tell if you've looked up anything on Mariota. The, the real thing is he had some injuries, and while we've never gotten 100% clarity, there have been little comments here and there when he went to the, to the Raiders initially, there was a little comment about his health, and the way that I view it, looking at the tape and looking at how he performs, it just seemed like a 2018 elbow injury against the Miami Dolphins, dubbed the the massacre in Miami by Titans fans, the longest regular season game in NFL history. Um, he injured his elbow in that game, and it led to nerve issues throughout the season where he was having trouble being able to feel with his throwing hand. And he wore a glove with two fingers covered and his first three fingers uncovered or the thumb and then the last two fingers. And it was just obvious throughout the entire season. He didn't have his full control of his hand. So essentially what happened from there was it exasperated some of the issues that he already had within his game. He doesn't have elite arm talent, so he doesn't have great arm strength. Now you take away confidence and feel on the ball. That's going to hurt even more. He was a guy who didn't really uh, progress through reads incredibly quickly. He was a little bit, I wouldn't say a slow processor, but not as fast as you need to be to be elite in the NFL. And that was one of the big knocks on him coming out of college because he had that one read system with Chip Kelly in Oregon. And it's a part of his game that never really progressed. Now, when he sees the coverage correctly, he knows exactly where to go with the ball. So he was able to still put together some good moments. And that, and that along with his incredible personality, uh, boring personality, but incredible nonetheless, uh, it, it just led to he's such a good guy. He does some good things. But when he lost his confidence after that injury to go along with not having elite arm strength, not having elite processing speed, uh, it made it tough for him. And then now you see it even with the Raiders, and it was obviously a problem with the Titans. One of the best parts of his game is his athleticism. He's almost like the first version of, you know, Lamar Jackson that we got in recent memory. Like, he was kind of a Lamar Jackson-type guy, but at the time in the NFL, teams weren't willing to commit to that sort of, you know, drastic change. So he tried to be a normal NFL quarterback, and then the injuries catch up with you. And if he tries to play that way, like a Lamar Jackson, then, like we saw with the Raiders, he's going to get hurt pretty quickly. So the injuries, I think, hurt his confidence, and they kind of put a bigger spotlight on the issues in his game, which are arm strength, processing speed, and with all of that together, it kind of led to his end in Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill, who, you know, he's one of those in-the-middle quarterbacks, so it's not like it was anything special to unseat. Marcus in his last year in Tennessee, but that's kind of the total complete package of what happened in Tennessee. But again, great guy, um, good person, uh, guy you want to root for, guy you want to do well, and that's why a lot of Titans fans still feel this immense amount of loyalty to him, despite the fact that he's been gone for multiple seasons. Now, Falcon fans got a little bit of taste of that great personality or that boring personality, as you said. He spoke to the media last week, mm -hmm. um, and seem to sort of express this notion that he's learned and grown from mm -hmm. his time in Tennessee, from, you know, uh, being benched there and then spending two years as a backup with the Raiders in Las Vegas. Do you feel like, you know, that's something that Falcon fans or, you know, potentially, you know, in the future beyond the season, given that, you know, he signed a two-year contract with the Atlanta and it's likely to be a one-year deal and at some mm -hmm. point, Everybody expects the Falcons to try to find a quarterback of the future and move on from Mariota. But do you feel like the, you know, there's still some untapped potential with Mariota? You kind of mentioned his running ability. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like a team could really sort of take advantage of that athleticism a little bit more and get a little bit more out of Mariota than necessarily Tennessee got out of him? Yeah, I I think there was another level. I, I think that that Marcus could have taken one step further than his best days with Tennessee. Now, I don't think that he has the ability to be an elite quarterback. I don't even think he has the ability to be a Super Bowl winning quarterback. But like like we see with Andy Dalton uh, at the end of his Cincinnati Bengals heydays and even into the, some of the years when he's a backup who certain teams could convince themselves as a starter. I think Marcus could get you, you know, a, a wild card berth in a playoff if he stays confident and he stays healthy. That's the number one thing. He can do some things that just 
most quarterbacks in the NFL can't do because of his athleticism, but also his arm and, you know, his accuracy. Like, he can throw the ball still, you know, and I mean, even if he's not elite at the traits we've talked about. So being able to run the way he does and still operate from the pocket at times, I think if you keep him confident with easy reads and easy throws and you can keep him healthy, which is just kind of a, a roll of the dice, I think that he could be, you know, uh, 14 to 18 range as a quarterback in the NFL in terms of like ranking. And a guy like that is probably good enough to, you know, get you to the playoffs. He could be right around Baker Mayfield and right behind, you know, Kirk Cousins and Ryan Tannehill. I think he could play at that level, but asking him to be confident and be healthy, that's really where the problems lie. But it's in there somewhere if you can get both of those. Yeah, you know, when you say that 14 to 18 range, I, I kind of think of a guy like Alex Smith, who was an athlete yeah. and very productive, very successful in the NFL, pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know, you look over the last decade, whenever he's been the starter on a quarterback on a team, they they go to the postseason. You know, you yep. know, you're not looking at that guy as the guy that's going to win you the Super Bowl, but certainly can right. stabilize your organization and get you a lot of wins. And, and maybe that's something that the Falcons can potentially look to or, you know, again, uh, a team beyond at Atlanta if you know his future is not necessarily a long-term one in Atlanta so uh Tyler I, I definitely appreciate you coming on and sharing your insights into Marcus Mariota any sort of final thoughts that you want to add before we duck out of here uh I just uh I hope that the Falcons fan base doesn't uh suffer the fate that the Titans fan base did of just continuously arguing about Marcus Mariota and how good he could have been and how good he should have been and whose fault it is that he wasn't good and blah, blah, blah. That probably shouldn't happen to the Falcons because he wasn't drafted there. And he did give the Titans some, some really good moments, but, uh, Either way, uh, even if the Falcons don't fight about it, it'll still be tough to be in that purgatory range. Cause even at his best, he's QB purgatory for the Falcons. So I think it might be better for the Falcons long-term if he doesn't play well and they get a higher pick next year to get, you know, maybe Young or Stroud or whatever quarterback you end up liking. Because, uh, again, my, my feelings on it is Marcus, at his best, is an Andy Dalton. and Or, you know, a Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield, Ryan Tannehill, a second-tier guy who you get to the playoffs, but, you know, you're not really going to do much of, of seriousness. And uh, I, I'll, be inter I'll be following the Falcons pretty intently throughout the year. I know a lot of Titans fans will, uh, but I'm just excited to see how you guys take the experience. Well, you know, good luck telling people not to fight about a quarterback. That that's impossible in this league. So, True. you know, people will will draw their lines in the sand, even on Marcus Mariota uh, or, or whoever the case may be. Uh, so, <laughs> right. Tyler, I appreciate you coming on. Let the people know some of the things that you're talking about on Locked On Titans this offseason. Yeah, so of course, uh, two big acquisitions and Austin Hooper, a guy that uh, Falcons fans know pretty well, and Robert Woods. Uh, the reality is for the Titans, it's just, are they going to get a quarterback to try to go to the next level? Can this team even go to the next level? So we're discussing that basically the entire offseason um, on Lock on Falcons. But if you really want uh, the hot takes, it's on Twitter at Tic Tac Titans, where I uh, make Titans fans mad, make other teams fans mad, everyone's mad, but it's always a good time. So just appreciate you having me on and, and good luck to you guys this year. Well, Tyler, I hope the latest Falcon X Falcon acquisition goes better for the Titans than the previous two with Julio and Vic uh, Beasley. So we will see. <laughs> we will see. Maybe that Cleveland Brown stint reversed the luck yeah. for the Titans a little bit there, but yeah, probably yeah. Not. You, you guys have been not doing so well, picking up our, our sort of refuse uh, these last couple of years. Half so. steps. The Titans love half <laughs> steps. We'll go get a superstar, but a washed up, broken down old one, you know, would never take the, the plunge like somebody like the Rams or something, but Hey, that's life. There you go. So, Tyler, again, appreciate you joining me. I, I look forward to our future conversations that uh, we hopefully will have. I'm sure there will be plenty of player personnel exchanges between the Falcons and Titans in the future. Yes. So look forward to those conversations. Absolutely. Take care. So, guys, that's going to do it for us here. Uh, I want to thank you for checking out another mailbag episode. Of course, you know, want to again plug the Locked On Sports Atlanta initiative. Go check out Locked On Sports Atlanta with Zeno and John Chuckery and Jarvis and Tanitra uh, on its own devoted channel on YouTube, as well as on the other various audio podcast platforms like Apple, Odyssey, Google, and Spotify that you want to subscribe to. Check out these shows. They're all launching today, Friday on April 1st, and we'll be running, you know, five days a week, just like the rest of uh, Locked On Network shows. 
uh, from here on into eternity. So go check out those shows, see, you know, which one that you like, you, you don't like, whatever the case may be. I'm sure you will find some great personalities as well as some great content on those shows as we move forward. If you guys want to submit questions for future mailbag episodes, as we sort of, as the month of April is starting to unfold, this is going to be draft month for us as we get you guys geared up for the 2022 draft. But of course we'll have opportunities to answer some listener questions and maybe we won't go two weeks uh, before answering them, hopefully. Uh, so you can submit those questions via Twitter at Locked on Falcons, via Facebook at Locked on Falcons. You can send an email to Locked on Falcons at mail.com. Or, of course, you can leave a comment here on the Locked on Falcons YouTube channel. And because it's draft month, why not check out the Locked on NFL Draft podcast in addition to all the Locked on Sports Atlanta shows that I'm sure you guys are going to be subscribed to. And, of course, Locked on NFL Draft is free and available on all the same podcast platforms. You can find Locked on Falcons. Locked on Hawks, Locked on Braves, Locked on Bulldogs, and of course, Locked on Sports Atlanta. Guys, appreciate it. Hope you have a great weekend. Till then.